Now we're going to move on to Sculpted Bison, another one of those titles that would be incredibly easy to memorize. And what we're looking at are two bison built up from clay. This is the first additive sculpture. Additive sculpture meaning you're adding material to create the sculpture as opposed to subtractive sculpture where you're cutting away, for example, stone to reveal Michelangelo's David. And these are each about two feet long. The cracks probably occurred while the artist was alive because clay, unlike the clay that you use maybe in a ceramics class, this is not pure clay. This is coming straight from a riverbank or maybe the cave floor. So it's got impurities. It's going to shrink as it dries. And we have two bison, one slightly smaller than the other. And being highly original people, most art historians assume that the smaller bison must be female and the larger one male, because that's how the animals are. It's also possible that the artist was simply trying to futz around and create two bison without worrying too much about their gender. These are again in strict profile, making them extremely representative, very recognizable. You can't look at them and not see bison. And they're permanently in these positions. We can't remove them from this cave. If we were to do so, they would probably just crumble because they're not fired or anything along those lines. So why bison? Well, bison are very, very important to Paleolithic Europeans. The reason is they will feed a family for a very long time, uh, three or four days. The meat is likely to rot before they completely consume the animal. So unlike shooting, well, not really shooting, but unlike capturing a rabbit or a duck or something much smaller, this would be a feast. It would be something to celebrate. They're also going to be more rare than many of the smaller creatures that they hunt and capture. So they're going to have sort of a mythological significance to them. This brings us to the bison with turned head. And this is actually a four inch piece. We see a reconstruction here in the upper left hand corner. And what it is, is it's part of an atlatl or a spear thrower, which you see in the lower left. The point of a spear thrower is it allows you to throw a spear much further, sort of like casting a fishing rod, allows you to throw that bait much, much further. The actual piece is only about four inches and it's made of reindeer antler. I've never seen it in the dark. It might glow red, in which case it's Rudolph's antler. There are incised lines cut into it to create the form. And the reason the neck is turned is not because they've suddenly discovered that you can manipulate these animals as you create them or as you depict them, but rather uh, purely pragmatic reasons. If you have the head hanging off, it's something that will easily break off of the spear thrower. So we bend it back for purposes of clarity and because it could snap off. We still, even with the turned head, maintain that profile. So it does make for a piece that is extremely clear. And it's a very interesting change. Uh, because, again, it requires imagination. It requires some more thought process, a little deeper thought process than simply looking at an animal and depicting it in strict profile. So we are moving along in the evolution of art.